Hi, I'm Pam Sidhu, and I'm joined today by a musical innovator. He's worked with the likes of Daljeet Basanj, yep, the Back to Basics album, Jazzy B, Surinder Shinda, to name but a few. But now he has just recently smashed it with Goen Ojala working on the brand new album, BTFU. I'd like to welcome our very own local lad, True School. How are you doing, Pam? You all right? I'm doing really well, thanks. All the better for seeing you this morning. <laughs> what? Dol yeah, Dolby. It's a Dolby, Dolby thing, isn't it? <laughs> it is a Dolby thing. So for those of you who don't know, I am actually from Derby. I travel over to Leicester every day for the radio. But there's a magical sound coming out of Derby. It has been for many years. And you're the main man responsible for this. You know, you've worked, you've got artists that are coming from abroad all the way here to Derby to work with you. Yeah, that's right. I mean, um, and Derby's got its own artists that, you know, that I've recorded and worked with. Like, I mean, JK's Derby and I taught him how to sing and I produced his album, Gulvinder Jor, Jor right. Golia and other, other songs that we did. He, he's also on Bhatta Jaktari, he's from Derby, the yeah. big Brad as well. And, you know, most, nearly most of the artists that I've recorded have, have actually come here and recorded. I think the only one, I think the only one who's not recorded here is Lab Janjwa. That He was recorded in Punjab. But Kaka, Lembert, everyone, they've all been here, you know, and recorded so you here. Say, so basically when people ring you up, you say, right, if you want to work with me, you need to come to Derby. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I work the old school way, so I don't uh, do the whole internet thing, you know, sending vocals across. I, 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 I'm... I'm I'm a traditionalist, so I feel like you need to sit with the person and make the music properly. Because if you're a producer, you need to be putting, you need to be directing the whole thing. Otherwise, it's not really legitly your work. You know, somebody else is just doing it for you, and you're putting your name on it. So I, I don't agree with that. So yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you, you know, you're you're bringing it back to basics, right? Uh, literally, and <laughs> keeping it real. Yeah, yeah. So, well, keep, keeping it proper, I'd say, keeping it proper. Yeah, yeah. and um, But you know what? A lot of people, they've heard of you. They know you're here in the UK. They know you're here in the Derby, in Derby. But people want to know more. It's like, were you born here? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely born and raised in Derby. In so Pear you're Tree. born and raised here. But the yeah. music that you're, that's coming out of you is very traditional. Well, you've got a whole mix going on there. You know, we'll talk about that in a little, little while. But you have got this really raw folk sound coming out as well that has come out in the past. So where's this come from? I mean, I mean, I don't want to keep bringing it back to Derby, but I have to do there because of what you've asked. It. It's like, you know, like my dad and my dad and stuff like, you know, the area where, where we're all from is most Punjabis are from Pear Tree, yeah. uh, which is like, you know, our equivalent of like a Hansworth kind of area or yeah. the South Road. So, uh, you know, it's just, it was a very, very dissy place. Very, very, you know, old school. Like, you know, my Bibi, she couldn't speak a word of English. Do you know what I mean? So like, we were brought up in a very dissy, not just household, and just a dissy area, you know, like, I, was, I remember primary school, uh, infant school that I went to, it was like 70% Punjabis, you know, and then the senior school was like, you know, 60% Punjabis, so yeah. our, my college, Will Morton, was, that was just like a Punjabi community centre. <laughs> well, I always say, and I said this when I moved to Derby, in fact, I got married here, right? I always said I got married in the bin. It is a proper bin, you know, in terms yeah, yeah. of Punjabi, in terms of bin. So I, think, I can see that. But but where did the musical influences come from? Um, well, my dad, he is Ran Ranjit, his name is Ranjit Singh Alk. So he was a percussionist. So he could play double, dolki and dol. Dolki and dol was his main thing. Um, so he initially taught me. I mean, so I was... Bought, we were all living in the same house at one point, you know, like right. the old school days. Yeah. So I'm born there with double A and gold gear around the house when there was hardly anyone in the whole country you could play it in them days. Yeah. So the fact that he could play the ball was like it had a huge impact because everyone around the area knew a child or ball master, you know, or like if he played the so if it was like somebody's wedding and he got the ball, like everyone would be like, Oh, we've got to go and listen to the ball. It was such a big occasion. And so for that to be in the family, it's, it's just had a massive impact because my, my dad and dad, they were hitting Ranjit. Well, they were always listening to Manik and Shindal and Sadiq and Davar Sambu and later on Davar Samar. But my other two youngest, Jabjit, Manjit and Sergi, they were um, they were listening to Michael Jackson, the Jacksons and Stevie Wonder and all of that. So like very soul, soul music, Motown 
with that in the Punjabi, it was just like, it was just, when you've got something like Kaldeep Mahani screaming down, you know, coming out the speaker, blazing at you, it just, just hit me in my head, really. So that's oh, what it was. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you 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 were born into this, you know. You've had you've been surrounded by it from the beginning. That's such a blessed start. And you know, when we're listening to some of the sounds that you're coming out with, of course, everybody knows. Um, you know, you've you've the people that you've worked with in the past. I've already already mentioned, but this album. Let's bring it back to this album at the moment. The music, uh, the collaboration that you've done with uh, God and Orjala is absolutely huge. It's trending everywhere, uh, over twenty countries. Uh, it's doing really, really well. It's hitting the top of those charts. How did that happen? Uh, I think with Garden, it was. Um, I mean, yeah, I think I, I think I take it back to he 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 released a song called Red Eyes. Yeah. So just when like so I think when the you know when the pandemic started, crow like March twenty twenty around that time is when we heard it, and um, and it sounded like a song that I produced for J.K. Shalle Mundiga. And yeah. uh, I, I could tell by the music. And then I didn't realise the guy who did the music on that song was actually a fan of me. He'd wow. been messing with me on Facebook for years, calling me a star and this, that, the other. So I thought, is Garnage there? Like, does he listen? Is he like a fan of us guys or something? That's what I thought. And then I heard one or two more and I was like, okay, something's going on here. And then I ended up getting a message from Garnage. And I was like, okay, so it kind of makes, make it, it all makes sense. And uh, he messaged... Um, but I eventually, when I did get back to him, um, I thought, well, let's let's just have a chat on the phone because he's like, can we do something? I was just like, I was like, I always want to speak to the person and see if I can get on with them first. But I don't even yeah. bother committing to any kind of uh, music at all. It's just like, let me see what the guy's like. And, uh, you know, then he, he told me that he, he's, he's a big fan of all the albums I've done and everything. So it kind of made sense. And then, you know, and then I eventually found out that the guy who did the music for that song was who I thought it was, who was messaging me on Facebook all them years ago. So, and then it was just like, can we do a song? I was just like, you know, I got such a good vibe off him. I don't know what came over me. I was just like, I was like, look, you know what? Forget doing a song. I don't like doing songs. Why don't we try and do an album? And he was over the moon because he didn't expect that, me to yeah. say that. And he's like, if we can do that, that'd be amazing. And uh, that was it, literally. And then uh, yeah, that's how it happened. And then obviously we had a lot of conversations on the phone, a lot of FaceTime. So, so I made sure we were doing a lot of FaceTime. So it was like I was connecting with him properly, like the next best thing to meeting him yeah. uh, to form that connection. And then he eventually ended up coming here. So when he came, it was like I already knew him because we'd spoken so often. Yeah. And you take him down to Pear Tree as well when they come, show him the roots. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's seen everything and he's walking all around and <laughs> over. And I was taking him for walks. So, you know, the, there's a song on the album called Bolli. Yes. And he, and he says, Garbi, 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 ni Sony a true school, not that I'll tell up her that Darby. He actually wrote that when we were going for a walk in Little Over. So amazing. We were, so, because we were going on a walk, he was like, So, because I said we need those verses written because we're going to go back and record. I go, We need a board leave, we need two board leave. Whilst we were walking, he thought, Well, I'm going for a walk. I might as well say it in the song. <laughs> so, so, that was a legit line. It was a legit line. You know? Perfect. As I said, you put in Derby on the map in more ways than one. You know, it's even going into the lyrics now as well. We've grown on. So you said, you know, he came over here. He, he's not the only one as well. You know, we know in the past, like the Jeets come here to oh, yeah, work yeah. with you. Grown Orjas come here to work with you. And it's because of the sound. You know, you are a, a musical innovator. The sounds that are coming out of you. But tell us, like, how did you, because I've listened to the album, right? And every track is different and it's one of those where it's like you've got to listen to it again and again and again because you get it on so many different levels every time you hear it and the amount of instruments that you've used it just blew my mind you know some of the tracks have just totally blown my mind in terms of um you know i could hear i could hear El Goze, i can hear thumbi i can hear flute i can hear all kinds of different instruments that you've fused together how, how tell us how do you do this i've got so many questions that i want to ask you you know um, no, thanks for that. I mean, I'm a musician, so I play most of the instruments myself, like the double, like the door. That was the one chords. of the questions I was going to ask you. Are you play, doing it yourself? Yeah, well, I mean, thanks, thanks for what you were saying. I mean, like, I play a lot of instruments. I'm a musician first and foremost before I'm a producer. So, you know, double, door, door, tumbil, gorge, harmonium, the keyboards, all the drum patterns, all the bass lines, all the chord work. I'm playing or, or you know any melody you hear on the keyboard i'm playing that if, if you're hearing a flute or a mandolin i've even composed what they're playing so i play i, I compose that on the keyboard and say 
we need to replicate this identically note by note. So yeah. that's so so it's all coming from my mind in terms of composition and and then production too. So being a musician stroke producer, that's why you're hearing what you're hearing. And that's why there's such a variety of instrumentation in there because um just because being a musician of you know and understanding those instruments like even the guitar for example I don't actually I can play a little teeny bit of it but I don't really play the guitar but I understand fully what the guitarist is doing every note on it what what the chords are so I can tell tell the guitarist well because these are these are the chords and uh, I can guide them you know to the fullest degree really yeah yeah and that's why you're creating this amazing fusion. I mean, I want to take it to one of the tracks on the album, It's a Hustle. Where did the musical in influences for that one come from? Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned that one because all the keys that you hear when the song starts, I've played all those on the keyboard, so there's no, they're not acoustic sounds, they're not, they're, they're not actual instruments, they're all keyboard yeah. sounds. And where that came from, I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of websites on there with samples that people are taking, like, websites like splice and stuff and i was like you know what? i'm not going to go on splice and take a chord sequence i'm just gonna i'm gonna play one and make it sound modern and current like like those samples so i've played all those chords and we filtered them and processed them me and my engineer Taj tl so we we proper processed and mashed them all up and made it sound like today's sound but yeah. coming from my hands you know from my fingers so yeah that's that's why it sounds like that but different at the same time and then i put it with my usual hip-hop hip-hop uh beats like the drums and the bass line and stuff and then with the folk so that's how you ended up with with that sound so this is what really got me about that one is uh, it's a hustle the way you've done the music you know as you just mentioned then the hip-hop beats and then the way you've brought the folk music into it as well it's like something that i've not heard before something that we have not heard before so you're taking it to another level again true school you know you do this with when you drop your albums when you drop your new music um, and you mentioned earlier as well about how there's a, a whole uh, group of people now, this whole sound that's coming out of Derby, because like, as you mentioned, we've got JK, we've got Govinda Jaha, there's the other people that you mentioned there as well, yourself. So what can we look forward to? What, what is coming out of, of Derby? Because obviously you put us on the map uh, yeah, internationally. We've got more because we've got TL, who's a producer as well. He's from Derby as well. He's, in, he's, he's released a few songs. On the Back to Basics album, one song, For The Dark, was actually made by TL. Um, and he's got other songs out. Um, we've got writers like Manjeev Samara here as well. So we, we've got it all in-house here, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I teach vocals here as well. So we've got a lot of, a lot of people that's coming. There's a few lads from Derby that learn who, you know, may be coming out soon. But we've got people coming from all over England, from, from Leicester, Nottingham, you know, Birmingham, Leamington and, you know, north, south, it's sort of from everywhere, you know, so there's a yeah. lot happening, there's a lot yeah. happening. A yeah. lot happening, a lot has happened, because even like, you know, I was mentioning some people there, another local act, uh, Chaos, Ammo here, you know, you guys have worked really yeah, closely guys, together. So, Ammo, and they're from Derby as well, so Camp yeah. Productions are from Derby, I mean, they've moved to Leicester now, but yeah, everything they did and learned and all that, they, you know, they were born and bred here. Yeah. So we, we've had, I think, you know, we've had the Radio Derby, Ajkali, which was the main sort of source for interviews for the whole industry, you know, that was the That's main. Right. So having that was a big influence as well, I've got to say, so, you know, all the biggest artists every Friday, they'd be coming here. So we've always had that. We've had, you know, the, 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 we've had some huge tape stores here selling the cassettes and CDs. So we've always had that big Bhangra uh, buzz in Derby. Then, you know, I think that was part of the reason why I started learning the instruments and sort of starting something up myself, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's like um, there was a huge, because those people who don't know that might be listening right now, there was a huge UK Bhangra scene, 80s, 90s, even going into the 2000s. It was massive. The music that was coming out of here was more than even what was coming out of Punjab at that time. You know, we had the leading bands in terms of Azad, Hira, Alap, you know, Jag, which are, there's just so many, uh, you know, the, the sounds of the Sahotas. I could just go on and on. We could have like a full on um, chat for hours all about what happened here in the UK. But what uh, I'm seeing happening right now is there seems to be a resurgence happening in terms of music. People are coming back here again, as we've I mentioned. I hope so because we 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 need that to happen for the UK, and that's something we've are uh, we're actively as a group trying to push because um, 
So we've started a label called Check One Records, which is a Derby-based label, but it's obviously inter- it's an international thing. And uh, the whole point of that is to sort of try and get the UK up and running again, try and encourage new- young producers from you know all over the country, like Red Valve, etc., and you know Maximum Energy, Cool Star. We've got so many. Uh, there's so much talent here in the UK that I'm trying to now give them a platform and say, look, we can start this again. There's, you know, there's producers like Manny Sandu, who's, he, yeah. he's still he's doing very well. You know, there's still things here and there's, there's people here with talent. And it's, it's all about producing the content again, try and make it as good as possible to that standard and start pushing it out again. Because a lot of people are just, they've just kind of got deflated and they're not making music here. So we are, it's not, it's not just about the resurgence. It's just about sort of, sort of like uh, making a sort of, uh, what's the word? Distinguishing ourselves again to saying, okay, this is our UK thing and I'll and have a local scene again like a domestic UK scene again yeah that's so important because Canada's have got they've got their scene and, and, yeah. and, and got, but we do need to have ours and I don't and I don't think it necessarily needs to compete with each other it just needs to exist you know and I think that's very yeah. important for us. and we're trying to make that happen again and hopefully it, it will stop because there's stuff coming out there you now you know there's, there's new vocalists here you know we've got stuff happening with JK again so Hopefully yeah. we've got this uh, ticking away again. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about the projects that you've got coming up? You just mentioned JK there. What else have you got coming up? <laughs> I've got some out. Al- I've got more albums that I've produced. So straight, well, I can't really mention which ones they are, but I've done one Punjabi film album, the, an enti- the entire album. for it's a, So there's a song Ford on the Garden Arjun album. Yes. Yeah. So this Punjabi film, that I'm do that I'm doing the soundtrack for the whole soundtrack. All the music is like the Ford songs, and there's 15 songs on the Desi folk genre. It's gonna be wow. proper pure Punjabi Desi tabla You know what you had in the mind like Oh this. yeah, yeah. So I've made a whole album with with a big artist. Um, that's gonna be out very soon. Actually, that film's gonna get released, and so the album will be out with that. It's a folk Desi album. So when you say it's a big artist, you can't actually reveal right now who it is. We're going to have to wait and see, aren't we? So you're keeping us waiting. I'd rather announce it properly at the time. And then yeah. I've done, and then there's a there's very popular female artists who I've done a full album for as well in Punjab. Um, that's 95% complete. Wow. Um, then uh, I'll be back on JK's album again after a couple of singles. And then another... Uh, really top artists with a top voice who are doing his album as well and as we get close to the time that will be revealed as well so I'm just doing albums because I prefer that over doing singles really yeah yeah you, you, you're bringing it back to back to its traditions aren't you and um, but it's great it, it, it's so inspirational to speak to you and I'm sure other people listening to you are inspired as well so for those of you who are listening if you've been thinking about picking up those instruments and going for it Now's the time because we are back on the map. Uh, lots of people uh, smashing it here in the UK. And you, you know, as I mentioned, you, you've got people coming. This is what gets me. You've got big, big names. These are not small artists. These are massive names that are coming all the way here to Derby, writing lyrics as they're walking oh, down the streets of Little Over with you, um, putting us on the map even more. Um, but you're you're inspiring. And and the thing, the thing that really um blows my mind is in terms of the folk sound coming out um you know there's people going to be sat in india in punjab that are going to be hearing that and that's the uk sound yeah i mean that, that's interesting that you say that you know when i did the ford song with Scott and Arjla, that song i always make sure there's a folk this pure punjabi i'm on about absolutely pure no keyboards and it. it's got to be purely pure authentic acoustic sounding sounding like it was made you know 35 40 years ago I always made sure that there's got to be at least one or two in every album so when I did this gardens album I was just like I don't know what people are going to say about it but it has to be there and the maddest thing is so this album's getting streamed like mad and that song is the most streamed song in the whole world out of that album (laughs) perfect the worldwide that song's getting streamed more than all the others which I just that is so brilliant to know because that showed me that people still want to hear true real Punjabi music you know that, yeah. that, that, that's what it tells me yeah it's, really- it's interesting you say that as well because at one point recently in fact there's been a lot of Punjabi stuff released 
without the Punjabi music. It's like it's like had a it's like Western music or even Spanish music, you know, different types of music, but not your traditional Punjabi music. So it's great that you know you're bringing it back. Well, that's a mindset thing because um, I feel my view is like when you if you if you're making Punjabi music, it's not just about having the language on the song Punjabi. Like I feel like there needs to be Punjabi instrumentation in there otherwise yeah. it's not going to be music anymore i mean the thing is there's, there's nothing stopping you from making a song that's got totally 100 percent western instruments in there with the Punjabi, but you can do that yeah. as well but yeah, you, you've but shown I, how you can fuse that together and it I works think, really well but having the punjabi instrumentation i think that's like a must i think that's going to happen I, I'm, and i found it funny with a lot of people from india you know, even the songs that are like very hip hop based in this album with a bit of the Punjabi, they're calling them folk songs because just because it's got a little bit of instruments in there. So they actually don't get what oh my, it's on is. Jati, and then they think that's that's it, that's folk. Yeah, it's like almost alien to them. So they don't know what actual fusion is. It's just really funny because they're just so used to hearing Western music with a Punjabi vocal on top. It's really weird. But yeah, hopefully we can bring that balance back. Yeah, it sounds like you are bringing it back. It's not even about the, a future tense. It's happening right now. And, and you started with the this album album now. In fact, you've been doing it for a long time. But before we go, what's your favorite instrument? What do you, if you had to pick one, if you had to pick one right now, what's the one that you enjoy playing the most? I mean, I, I can't, I, I definitely can't answer that question because, you know, the first instrument I learned was the drums and the double like, door key. But so I can't, you know, I mean, I practice harmonium probably. That's probably the most deepest I've gone with an instrument, mm. l- 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 classical rag and stuff. But but then I don't want to say my favorite over the ones I learned first. So I just say that like, just treat them all the same. To be honest, yeah, just, yeah. yeah. I haven't really yeah. got a favorite instrument now. Yeah, yeah. You've got a great relationship with so many of them. It's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today here at Suffolk no Radio. Uh, we really appreciate it. Local lad, as I mentioned, you know from from Derby. Um, putting us on the map internationally you have been doing for many years this is nothing new um, you have been um, you know up there at right at the top of the scene for many many years working with the greats continuing to do that this album um, with Goran Ojeda BTFU yeah see I'm trying not to say the full title because obviously exactly. not allowed on radio um, yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah it's it's amazing and it's just going from strength to strength it's just getting bigger and bigger and we're going to be seeing a lot more stuff from you as well true school so thank you so much keep inspiring thank you very much see ya